Jiminy Cricket is a little Bedlington Terrier that we're working with in Betty Rescue and he's got to go for an MRI to look for some problems in his back but the vet has previously been hideously stressful for Jim so we've been working on different techniques to help him feel much more relaxed and as part of doing this Betty Rescue asked if we'd make a little video diary of what we do today to see if it helps some other people too. So Jiminy Cricket and I have a well rehearsed routine for coming out of a kennel calmly and quietly. Harness goes on, waits for the door until he's really hungry and you can't give him his breakfast and it's early in the morning so really exciting because he doesn't normally see you at that time and then you get this. Yes, really. Best laid plans and all. Don't worry, take two went much better. So this is called cheating, because I've done this with Jim before, and I know that when he's really hungry in the morning, the chances of me getting any sort of sense out of him is very limited, and we don't want to add frustration. So what I've done is just let him out without his harness on, which I can do, because his recall is awesome, and there's nobody here. So it's calm and quiet and it'll be much less stressful. What I should say is that the environment was pretty calm and quiet. Jim eventually ended up being calm and quiet once we'd been and done a little bit of free work using just some scents and smells because we obviously couldn't use food. And then we were able to head off for the car. And we're in the car and ready to go. And we've actually just met two little dogs who live at the kennels who he's only just seen for the first time and he's done brilliantly well we're not going back out to say hello again though you wait there and we matey are off to the vets good boy so by way of a quick recap make sure you book to go to the practice at a quiet time talk to your vet about using some medication beforehand it can transform how easy the visit is for your dog might take a couple of tests to get the right combinations Keep stress levels right down and if you do have a small moment of madness, use something like a bit of free work to help get things back down on an even keel again. And always have a contingency plan, like when two little dogs potter up unexpectedly and you still need to get to the car feeling calm and relaxed. You having a sniff round? Good boy little man. Oh. Let's have a potter and a mooch. We come this way. Good lad. Yeah, good boy. Is that the big scanner that you're going to be on in a minute? Is it? Jim did really well this morning, but he just needed a little bit of reassurance a couple of times, particularly when we were waiting for the vet nurse to come out and check him in. And you can just see him jumping up in the first picture, which is one of his coping strategies. But a quick cuddle, and we were all sorted out. So Jim's just sat on my lap in the back of the car and waiting for the vet to come over to do some sedation because Jim's going to go to sleep tucked up on me again like we did last time so it keeps stress down to a minimum. It's a bit noisy around here, this isn't my normal vets and um, we've had to come to where the scanner is. So uh, he's got quite a lot to look at but he's doing brilliantly well this morning. Hey, are you going to look at the camera and say hi? Are you? No. Okay. And he's just had his sedation and we're starting to get a little bit sleepy in the back of the car. So my plan now is just to close the car up so that he's nice and dark and rested. Now he's pretty much out for the count and then they'll come back and scoop him up in a minute. And it's really important to keep dogs warm and comfy when they're sedated. So I've just tucked him in with his blanket, I've already popped his harness off. And he's not fully out for the count yet, but very nearly. So that little bit of darkness over his eyes will just help him really relax. Make sure his nose is free. And there we will wait. And we're a few minutes on and he is out for the count. So that taking away all the sensory stimulation, keeping it dark and quiet and calm. And I've just sat with him. He's got a familiar smell under his nose from his blanket he's drifted off beautifully good job much better than last time really happy with that 
I think it can be really helpful for dogs to wake up in the same place that they went to sleep. Imagine if we were to go to sleep somewhere and then wake up somewhere completely different. It'd be a lot more stressful. That isn't always possible at the vets because it does depend on the procedure that your dog is having. But even if you just have a blanket that can be under and around them that they use when they go to sleep and that same blanket and those same smells are there when they wake back up again that can be really helpful. So when you're at the vets again keep things nice and calm and let your dog give you some pointers as to what they need to be supported. Allow some choices within an appropriate framework, listen to those and your dog's going to feel a heap better. Do ask your vet to make some adjustments. Most vets are fine to help get dogs sedated in a place that's most comfortable for them. Makes the vet's life easier too, but it will depend a little bit on the procedure that you're having done sometimes. And do try and make it a smooth transition to waking back up again, even if it is just that familiar blanket that's underneath and around them. When you get back home, even if your dog was at the point of being fully awake whilst at the vet's, they're likely still to be quite tired and a bit out of sorts during the afternoon. So it's quite important to make sure you support them properly during that recovery process. We always offer somewhere super quiet and chilled and take out some of the lights so a covered crate is ideal. Uh, but the door's open at this point for Jim so he can be in or out as he needs to. Sometimes it's also appropriate to shut the door and when I walked away to get him some food, as you'll see on the next slide, I did actually close the door because he was still really tottery and I didn't want him to follow me. So Jiminy Cricket's been awake for about five seconds and he's now hungry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that better? And no, this is not a normal Bedlington Terrier sized portion of food. This is a Jiminy Cricket sized portion. It's an entirely different thing. Is that better? Normally he'd have his food in an activity of some sort, but having just woken up, I don't think that's quite the right thing to do. So we're just having a bowl of food that's easily accessible and extra tasty and he looks very pleased with himself. So Jim might have been able to eat a bowl of food, really wasn't with it at all. So we gave him some choices and he wanted to come and settle on my lap which was fine. Took a little while, did just some gentle touch, she really enjoys. Bed starts to go down. No, think we might need a little cushion under there. Hang on, just getting the little cushion. Attending to Sir's every comfort. Oh, it's just a pillow, Jim. And we wait. And there he goes. Down goes that head, still using my toe, not the pillow. But never mind, good enough. At least he's calm and quiet and happy and settled. Okay, you're gonna need to turn the volume up a tiny bit to hear these videos, because I was trying to be really quiet and not disturbing. This is actual footage, not staged for a video. Slide the pillow under his head and see if I can take my foot out. Mm -hmm. Big deep sigh. And sit. Magic. Look at that. So we can cuddle my one foot. So I then had the bright idea of trying to make him a bit more comfy. But with two hands available, I've 
just repositioned him onto the pillow so he's a bit more comfy. And hopefully that'll be it for about an hour. Famous last words. Just look at part three. An hour. Who was I kidding? Let's call that five minutes. Um, but we have now made it to the sofa, which is sort of more comfy, apart from the fact that he's kind of sprawled himself over my lap and is poking his elbow into the side of my knee. But I won't worry about that, at least my foot's awake now. See you all later. And the only thing better than being asleep on Auntie Lisa's lap is hoovering up my very favorite cold press biscuits in the kitchen because they're amazing and I love them even though I'm still half asleep. So this is dinner number three and slowly we're filling up a little bit at a time. There was a definite progression over the afternoon from needing to sleep right on top of me for that reassurance and comfort to being able to sprawl next to me and then eventually to being able to settle on his own on a cushion although that position really does look quite uncomfortable but he stayed there for ages so I assume he was happy and we did more and more of that as we went through the rest of the day. So the big themes again keep it nice and calm let your dog be your guide and a couple of other pointers just make sure flooring is stable for dogs that are recovering from sedation wobbly legs and slippery floors it's a bad combination uh, do offer food little and often make sure you offer water regularly sometimes dogs that are recovering from sedation don't always get up and get themselves a drink and give a choice of sleeping arrangements and do be prepared for the odd toilet accident sometimes we'll find that dogs will wee unexpectedly when they're recovering from a sedation and tired brains and bodies definitely don't always work together to make sure they get to where they normally go and that's it we hope that's helped and given you a few ideas and we'll let you know jim's mri results when we get them in a week or so's time